Today we're going to show you how to install an AT6 asset tracker on a box trailer. Um, this is not a reefer unit. We're going to work on the power box on the, of the trailer. Um, you'll have this power box on box trailers, reefer units, other types. Uh, flatbeds usually do not, um, but the installation is very similar as far as the wires go. First thing we need to do is take access to the power box. Finish taking off the front plate. We're going to pull the uh, your J-Bus connector out, should pop out just like that. Take off the front cover. Now we have access to all the wires. Once we have access to the box, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the wires here, connect the device. I will caution you to check your manufacturer um, details on your individual trailer um, to make sure which wires you're hooking up to. What we are looking for on this particular trailer is the ABS wire or ABS system. That's the one wire that has constant power when it's hooked to the trailer. On this particular trailer, it happens to be the center pin, which happens to be a blue wire. What you'll also have to do is locate the ground. What we suggest is to run the wiring from the asset tracker through the bottom of the box, wire it inside the box so all of your connections are secure and, and uh, waterproof, um, and we'll connect that too. So what we've done is we've just fed the, box, or fed the wiring harness through here. Now that we have it through, we want to separate the wires. For this connection, we're only going to use three wires. We're going to use the red, the white, and the black. The other four wires are for future uses for our asset trackers. At this time, what we want to do is tape these off um, so that they won't interfere with each other. Since we're using an electrical box, we want to wire and nut those off as well. I'll put tape at the bottom to separate the ones I'm using and the ones I'm not. And that's just to separate the wires as far as the harness. What I will do when I'm finished is, is individually nut, uh, tape these off and then wire nut them together so they don't interfere with anything inside the box. On a basic connection, so that we get constant power to our asset tracker when the, it's connected to the uh, tractor, is we're going to take red and white. We're going to tie those together. On this individual installation, I'm going to hook it to the ring terminal of the center pin, which again is constant power on the ABS. I'm going to hook the black to ground, which is on the, on the white terminal here. Another alternative is that you can splice into the wire and run it through on a poke and wrap method um, to scourge the wire if you don't have enough room inside the box to hook it to a terminal or you have a bigger uh, junction box to work with. This individual case, we're going to put ring terminals on here. Make sure you have a very solid connection on your ring terminal before you connect it. Easiest way to do it is once it's connected and crimped, pull on the terminal to make sure it's not going to come loose. We'll do the same thing with the ground wire. And again, the same thing. Just tug on it, make sure it's a good connection. Both of those are a solid connection. I can go and hook those onto the ring terminals. What we've done is we've, we've taken the nuts off the, each of the terminals. Now we're ready to connect the terminals on. As you do this, we want to be very careful that we don't interfere with plugging the pins back up. Um, and in this case, what we'll probably do is we'll strip down the cable a little further just to make sure there's no interference with the uh, pins when they go back inside the box. I'll go ahead and run these down on the terminals to tighten those up. Your green and yellow wire, those cannot touch. We want to make sure those are taped off and separate. Your other wires, the uh, brown, blue, and orange, can simply be snipped off. Um, but we need, it, it's definitely a must to make sure that the yellow and green don't touch, even though we're not going to use them. One's an input, one's an output. We don't want a signal running back through there. So these get uh, wire nutted individually, and then the other three will get snipped. Now that we've got everything done, we've done our wire management. Um, I've got wires out of the way so it doesn't interrupt with the uh, plug um, going back in on the install. Our wires here, the other wires that we're not using, um, we can clip those clean as long as they don't come in contact with each other. You can wire them off. 
On this install, we're gonna simply cut them clean. All those wires are used, can be used for future things that we're planning on having with our asset trackers, future uses. Um, but again, as long as they're cut clean and not coming in contact with each other, we're perfectly fine. You can also tape those off if it makes you feel better or use a wire nut. One thing you want to note that the voltage on here typically on most systems will run between 11 to 14 volts. They can run as, about as high as probably 20 volts. Um, and you can test these with a voltage meter. Um, again, check your manufacturer's requirements um, for the trailer, what the, what's registered on the trailer. Um, but again, constant power. Um, you want you make, want to make sure you don't put on the brake lights, your uh, running lights, because those would actually have to be turned on to work. So it does need to be a constant power source, something that's going to have constant power when, they, when it's hooked to the truck. And again, make sure you got a good negative. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to put the plate back on the uh, device, make sure that's a good connection, and then seat it. Once that's seated, we'll go ahead and put on the last two bolts. Once the box is sealed up, uh, you can use silicone in anywhere you put wires. If you want to re-silicone the box to keep water out of it, it's probably a good idea as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to surface mount this to the outside of the trailer. Um, ideally, you want to connect to the most solid surface you can on this individual uh, trailer. This is a quarter inch steel down here and I can't drill through it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it right above it. And we're going to surface mount it on the uh, body itself. You'll see that it's very securely mounted. Um, once we do that, what I'll do is I'll take zip ties and uh, make sure that this wire is secure and out of the way. Just so you know, um, on the install, what you want to do is always make sure that you have access to the fuse on the device. Because if the device goes offline, more times than not, it's the fuse that's gone bad. Uh, so you want to make sure you have availability of that fuse. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip tie this out of the way to make sure it's just a, a better fit. Again, leaving access to that uh, fuse, just in case the device goes bad, it makes it easy, very easy to check. And there's your completed installation.